Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here. Today we are looking at Dazzler the Movie, a uh, Marvel graphic novel number 12 by Jim Shooter, Frank Springer, and Vince Coletta. Look at this gorgeous Bill Sienkiewicz cover. You know it's going to be good. So subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that like button and let's get right into it. I love this book for so many reasons. I was so excited when it came out. I'm a big Dazzler fan. Big shock, right guys? Um... Uh, one of the best things about the Dazzler run, of course, are these amazing covers by Bill Sienkiewicz. But I feel like a lot of um, writers uh, really tried to take a character that was largely sort of scorned and dismissed as a disco gimmick and try to make her, you know, viable. And I think that Jim Shooter is one of the biggest proponents of that. Um, having a hand um, in her creation, I believe, um, you know, legend has it. Oh, by the way, shout out to Michael Avila, Mike Avila um, from Sci-Fi. I watched his Dazzler video and um, it was shed a, a little bit of light on the origin of Dazzler, which I think is relevant here. Um, she was created uh, to be sort of like um, Casablanca Records, um, was going to make a deal with Marvel to, um, I don't know, sort of create comic books based on music and turn them into movies or something crazy like that. And Dazzler was one of them. And she was supposed to be black. And John Romita Jr. based her largely on um, Grace Jones. And there's this great concept sketch of her out there in the wild. If you can, I'll try to find it and attach it. I don't know. But anyway, it's amazing. And while that would have been so good, I feel, because I'm a huge Grace Jones fan, Grace Jones fan, I can't deny that I love Alison Blair, and I'm so glad we have her. So anyway, I, Jim Shooter was supposed to be writing like a Dazzler script for a movie based on the character, and the movie never happened. Um, so eventually when Marvel started doing their graphic novels, this was, I guess, his opportunity to write the Dazzler movie. And it very much reads like a movie, I have to say. Um, I give Jim Shooter a lot of credit. I know he's very controversial. Um, there's a lot of crazy sexism going on here, but I feel like it's relevant and kind of groundbreaking and almost like, uh... Um, I feel like this is sort of exposing Hollywood in a way, like years before it, it happened a couple of years ago with the Me Too movement and stuff. I mean, this is very quintessential Hollywood. Um, living in L.A. and sort of, you know, trying to be an actor and stuff, like, this is kind of a very accurate portrayal in a lot of ways. And um, I th find it very interesting to read it now as opposed to reading it when, you know, I was like a kid and it just came out and I just loved Dazzler. <clears throat> Probably not for children. Anyway, um, I just love this. This looks like a movie poster. So Dazzler's supposed to be making a movie. Um, she gets out as, as a mutant. I mean, it was so controversial. Um, once again, sort of a very paralleling to me in a lot of ways how, uh, you know, sort of mutants coming out of the closets and the stigma of mutants very much echoes like uh, gay people and homosexuals. And, you know, like uh, an actor wouldn't want to come out as gay because it would ruin their career. So that's sort of like happening to Allison and as a mutant here. So it's kind of very like high concept, kind of cool. Anyway, I love this. Her sitting on the Hollywood sign. I mean, this is beautiful. This, this like, could be a James Bond poster or something. Uh, the heart with the blood dripping and the car, the Rolls Royce, the movie exec and, you know, the leading man who really wasn't there. Or was he? Who could it be? I mean, I feel like Bill sort of uh, drew this independently, not really seeing the art inside in some ways. But, and of course, you got your classic palm trees which I don't think are indigenous to Los Angeles, which was, like, truly heartbreaking for me to find out. Um, 1984, Dazzler, the graphic movie. Oh, my God, I was so young when this came out. Anyway, the entire world knows Alison Blair's secret. What happens next will affect every living mutant forever. So I feel like um, it's funny because uh, editor-in-chief James Shooter... He always, it was always credited as Jim Shooter. And I feel like, like he was serious. There was gravitas. This was like his big 
you know, he, I feel like he was proud of this. And he should be. I kind of really love this. So, James Shooter, Frank Springer, Vince Coletta. Frank Springer and Vince Coletta were the artists on the um, Dazzler series a lot. Um, Vince Coletta is lamented a lot for being a horrible anchor, ruining a lot of anchors. But, you know, I think he did okay in this. And I think that maybe he thought it was going to be a kind of big deal and kind of did... The art, I don't hate their art. I kind of like it. You know, they were like romance artists, and I think that's a little bit appropriate for Dazzler and maybe the concept of this book anyway. Lettering, John Morelli. Coloring, Christy Scheel. Editor, Ralph Macchio. And editor-in-chief, James Shooter. Ralph Macchio was part of uh, Mike Avila's video. You should find it. Sci-Fi, Dazzler. Very interesting story. I love this opening page. So she's an aerobic instructor in Los Angeles. Um you know, trying to make it as a, as a singer. Um, and, um, her mutant power, like she just is absorbing this music and noise of the exercising class. And she doesn't realize it, but she's giving off this glow, which sort of makes her more appealing to everybody because they don't know because it's, it's her mutant ability. And that would be terrible. Um, but I love how, you know, you sort of use the people or or the supporting, like, B characters to sort of help tell the story. And, you know, having his first comic book story published at 13, I think that if nothing, if you, whether you like him or not, his writing or not, you can't deny the fact that Jim Shooter has a firm grasp on the fundamentals of writing. He had a very um, strong idea of how comic book stories should be told and, like, how... You introduce characters and, you know, um, keep in mind that this is a reader's first comic and all this kind of stuff that I think he presented a good model and probably made Marvel Comics all the more accessible and entertaining during his reign as editor-in-chief. So she realizes that she overhears them talking about her glowing and she's like, oh, I better hold that in check. And then she farts. No, I'm just kidding. Could you imagine? And, um, let's see. So then, you know, it's like, they're like, oh my God, she's amazing. I love her. Men want to be with her. Women want to be her. Oh my God, I can't, but I'll forgive you for saying that because I kind of want to sleep with her too. She's so amazing. We're all going to hit on her. She's so great. Um, and then she's like, I am not wiped out after aerobics. I need to lift weights because I am that much, like, they're very much trying to show her as, like, this amazing person, which, of course, she is. Um, and then this guy, of course, tries to hit on her. Like, she gets hit on relentlessly. It's so crazy. So, um, she hands him the barbell and he can't handle it. And, um, uh, you know, she refuses his advances. I guess he's like a producer or something wants to take her out. And then, but she already, this geek already hit on her and, um, she's going to go have a carrot juice with them. He gives her a ride home <laughs> and in a very wrong message, um, she rewards him by giving him a kiss because he thinks she's pretty and she wants to build his confidence. So I don't, I don't know. I, I feel like that. I don't know, Allison, maybe, you know, I don't know, but it works, you know, he feels more confident and he drives off singing. So what are you going to do? Allison comes home. Um, I do appreciate, I love the art in here. Um, I, the, uh, I saw a, a recent review that described it as very like mediocre Marvel house style. But once again, like, I feel like these artists are coming from romance comics and it's, very soap opera-y. It's very much uh, a movie, Hollywood movie. I mean, I think it's pretty done well all around. I, I love the colors that Christy Shield brought here. I can imagine, like, I kind of would love to see it recolored because just, like, more dazzling, brighter. But if you know my art, my own personal art, it's, like, just been described as Hanna-Barbera on crack. It's very garish, bright, and um, unapologetically... Uh, you know, shockingly bright and sparkly. So that's what I like. What can I say? So is it any surprise we're looking at a Dazzler book and obsessed with Storm, especially Mohawk Storm from this era. So I was beyond geeked that we got this cameo by the X-Men here. Aurora making a routine call to 
And I just love, like, this is so how you would never see Aurora, just sort of, like, laid back on the couch. And I love her outfit. This is what I'm thinking about, um, like, uh, Frank Springer here, is that, like, he draws really pretty women, and, um, <laughs> the insane eyelashes, the, the Vince Coletta hallmark. I don't, I, I don't know. It always reminded me, and those who know will know, like, if your mom colored her hair and she had, like, the instructions and there was, like, illustrations of the of what to do and applying the hunt. And they always had, like, really pretty soft faces like this. And that's what that's reminding me of. It was actually, like, really good art. I'm sure it was done by, like, ad execs or, or not ad execs, but, like, commercial artists and stuff. But I loved it. I would love a whole comic. Maybe that's what I should do. The Hair Dying Comic Book. There we go. Oh, my God. Inspiration. I need to write that down. Why write it down? I'm recording it. Hopefully I'll watch this again. Anyway, the X-Men, but like, what a waste though. Like, this is clearly pre-image. I mean, you're missing a money shot like this. I mean, that is kind of great of Storm on the Couch. I do love that. But like the X-Men, you've got Colossus, Wolverine, and Nightcrawler, and they're that big in the background. Crucial miss here. Love that. I mean, it seems so out of line with what was really going on with Storm, but... Once again, I feel like, you know, like, I feel like this artist, that's what I'm saying, like, coming from the romance books and stuff, it's very believable, like, uh, spaces that they live in and fashion. I mean, that, you know, some real thought went into that look right there, I feel. And Storm looks pretty badass. Let's give her that. I always love this panel, too, of her just watering her plants in her attic. You know, there's something to be said, because I feel like... um you know, I got into comics when the art started getting more exciting. So this I, this sort of like, you know, six panel grid or straightforward storytelling always seemed a little lackluster to me. But now I have such a new appreciation for it. There's some, I mean, just to like draw the detail of like this, like in all these panels, I just love it. I mean, this must have taken forever. And Vince Coletta did not butcher it on the inks. I feel like he did pretty good. There's actually a lot of faces in here that look like they could be referenced to real people. And I don't know, you know, the, I don't know if they were getting paid more. The residuals had to be more because this is a way more expensive book. So I don't know. And here's Allison. Um, she's going to get hooked up with this like old gross producer who's very um, Harvey-ish, if you know what I'm saying. I think you get flagged for saying his name, so I'm not going to say his name, but his last name starts with W. Um, but this is very much that. And it's funny because it's very telling because, you know, when the whole Harvey thing came out, everyone was like, oh, we knew it's been happening for years. Nobody ever says anything because they protect him because you don't want to be blacklisted or ruin your reputation. And all of that is happening in here. And this is 1984, so... It sort of is very, like, revealing in, a, in that element. You know, I feel like either Frank Springer lived in Los Angeles or did heavy research, because this is so believable. You know, I, th I feel like a lot of times um, when you read a comic book and it takes place in New York or L.A., it's often, and effectively so, just like the artist's version of, um, you know, what they think it should look like. But this looks, like, very authentic. And I love she's singing... Elton John's I'm Still Standing. I kind of like the way Shooter writes because, like, he does callbacks and, like, like a lot with the the conversations. Like, he's, he's actually pretty good at, like, believable dialogue, good storytelling, pacing, and um, there's a reason he's Jim Shooter, people, is what I'm trying to say. Um... And I just love it. Like, there's never a missed opportunity. But I have to say, like, it, it, <clears throat> for her to be sexually harassed, but it, it's kind of like that in real life. <laughs> I love this panel. I think it's so gorgeously drawn. But this is kind of a nugget, and I feel like the thoughtfulness that Jim Shooter put into it. Because, like, this guy, like, she's being outed as a mutant, and they're kind of trying to figure it out. Like, this guy, this smarmy producer, kind of figures it out. He's like, she's not even blinking. Like, everyone else is blinded by all the flashes and stuff, and she's just staring into it. And I, I just thought it was kind of cool, because that makes sense of her power. Like, she's able to convert sound waves into light, any form of light. So, how you know, it's like... uh 
you know, being immune to your own BO or something. Like, it wouldn't affect you like that. <laughs> um, this is so funny. Like, I mean, he, sh he comes in and, um, you know, of course makes a pass at her and, like, breaks the coffee table. And he's so gross. Like, he wears a toupee and has... And then he, like, stalks her in the street, gets into a car accident. I mean, this is, like, hardcore. That... And then, but I have to say, like, it's so weird. Like, because, <laughs> I mean, after all this, he eventually gets her. I mean, how crazy is that? Runs after her, his old ass, weaving, wheezing and panting on the sidewalk. And then he fakes a heart attack. And it's like, oh, you care. <laughs> And then she's like, all right, I give in. You almost killed me. Whatever. You're a psycho stalker. Let's go have lunch. And I mean... <laughs> and so they're at this swanky place, like, having lunch in Beverly Hills or something. I don't know. Russian tea room looking ask. I don't know. It must have been... Who knows what was happening in L.A. in 1984. But it's pretty, like, so she, you know, he wins her over. He's going to make her movie and produce it. Um, they start this, like, scandal in the wrecks. I mean, it's all very, very realistic as far as the way Hollywood works and stuff. You know, she... He's, like, she's had more, her morals are loosening and her, you know, she's getting used to the cush life. She starts drinking with him. She's smoking. Um, she's spoiled by all this stuff. She says she loves him, sort of, sort of, but she can't go any further unless he knows that she's a mutant. And he's like, oh, that explains blah, blah, blah. He hasn't freaked out. They stay together. Um... And then, I mean, there's a lot going on. He's basically betraying her with this producer from the beginning who figured out she's immune. I mean, this, spoilers, but there's, like, this, like, a lot of intrigue here. And I feel like Marvel could almost make a Dazzler movie just based on the script, and it would be kind of perfect. Like I said, because it's very, like revealing and like very telling of the Hollywood and I think it would be a good glimpse and nugget into that so like I said here she is living she's you know we've got the montage of her living it up being accustomed to the good life she gets all these packages delivered but then here's the weird thing does she not aside from the different hair does she not look the same and gorgeous and like dazzlery so now she says She's smoking, drinking. It's the morning. It's so scandalous. And then she's like, oh my God, I'm fat. So I'm going to get naked in front of the mirror and start glowing. Which is what I do when I feel fat. Uh, and then he walks in on her. She flips out. And then it's kind of, it's weird. I mean, if you want to get really psychological, he walks in on her naked, which is, you know, always a, sort of a an intrusion to say the least. And then he betrays her further by leaking the fact that she's a mutant, thinking that this PR spin is going to make it better. And then so the, the goal of the movie is to sort of show mutants in a positive light. And so as part of her mutant coming out, see, it's also like a telling thing too, like, like outing people in Hollywood is like not cool. Like you don't, you do not, you know, some... The only person to announce their sexuality should be themselves. As I'm guessing, the only people who should announce that they're a mutant are yourselves, so you don't out someone. I mean, she gets pissed, so they're going to have this, like, um, press conference and come up with this gimmick. They're at LAX, they have all these jets lined up, and they're going to turn on the engines, and she's going to turn the sound into light and make it glow. And of course, she's in a string bikini. Why wouldn't she be? I mean, that makes perfect sense. Airlifted in in a helicopter and she's got a cape. Not under... May, I don't know. Oh, maybe the bikini is, like, so that... Um, you can see she doesn't have any, like, uh, gimmicks up her sleeve. I mean, she might as well be naked. This could be made out of, like, some sort of solar panels that we don't know about. Anyway, um... Roman Nekaba. Oh, Roman... So she absorbs all the noise from this. That's another cool thing that I kind of like about, like, comic books when they explain stuff. Like, 
And that would be like so epic in the movie. Imagine the scene in the movie. So Allison's absorbing the roar of all these engines. It's hurting their ears. I don't know if it would really hurt their ears or not, but um, uh, but then suddenly it goes silent because she's absorbed all the sound while this major light show is going on that you can see from the moon. I mean, that's freaking cool, right? I kind of love it. And this is beautiful. Like, just, it, it just shows that he knows how to draw, I feel. Yes, I definitely think that would be a freaking awesome scene in a movie. Glowing from the moon in complete silence with all the people, like, freaking out in the audience. So it causes more mutant hysteria. They're all afraid of her. They leave in a panic. Oh my God, let me out of here, this crazy mutant freak. I mean, she glew, she glowed, and it was it was scary. She almost killed us from glowing. I mean, what the hell, right? But anyway, I mean, people. So I guess that wasn't much of a success. They go out for dinner, and then they get attacked by these anti-mutant people who call him a mutant lover, mutie lover, throw bricks at them, and of course, uh, she uses her power to incinerate the bricks, and scare them and then she wants to go home and she's pissed like obviously coming out as a mutant was a huge mistake now i need to this music movie to be perfect you creep and this is like the best panel ever this should be a meme uh don't look alley me i'm calling the shots now understand because it's my over plump little ass on the line i i mean can you not hear that in a movie it's so good this is like how did Jim Shooter never write a script? I love it. Anyway, and then she becomes the aggressor in a weird change of events. I'm like, obviously the messaging is a little off here. And she's like, now you're going to screw me. Anyway, so she's like, screw that. I'm not going to smoke anymore. I need to work out. I mean, this is plump, guys. So she gets her fat ass back in the gym. I mean, look at this heifer. She can barely lift 100 pounds now. But she did it, and she's back, and it's over. She's alive with pleasure. Now see, remember when I was talking about the inking of Vinnie Coletta? I mean, that clearly looks like someone, if not Coletta himself. This has to be Springer and Coletta right here. It just has to, along with Abraham Lincoln. They're all in here, people. The greats, the near greats. Maybe Lincoln was a time traveler, and he, and he decided to become a, a, a key grip on the set of Dazzler, the movie. Dazzler threatens demonstrators. Oh yeah, what does she say? We've seen what you can do, lady. Then stay out of my way. I love it. That would be all over TikTok, wouldn't it? Interesting. I, now I want to see the movie. That's the sequel to this, guys. Oh my God. And you know, I, like, could you imagine how epic this would be if Bill Sankiewicz painted it? I mean, that wouldn't, or I mean, at least penciled and inked it, but... That wouldn't be fair to Frank Springer and Vince Coletta, who were like, put so much time into the series. But it'd be so cool. He should do the sequel where we where we just get them, and Jim Shooter can write it, where we get like the movie um, that we didn't get to see that was filmed of Dazzler. That would be so cool in so many ways. Mmm, thanking Cap. See, I need to live another hundred years to make all this shit happen. Anyway, that's kind of fun. I don't know. You know, it's funny because even when it came out, I feel like it was like, eh. But um, I loved it. I was so excited when this came out. I died. I just thought that was such a pretty panel. They're watching the movie. And then, <laughs> it's so stupid. But it's so funny. And once again, I can totally see this in the film. They're watching the screener, you know, pre-production without the without the CGI, even though they didn't have CGI then. But you know what I'm saying. Um, and then, like, the angry mob tries to attack them in the screening room, like, we're gonna get you, we're gonna kill you, meat, muty, and your dead meat, Nekaba. Anyway. And Dazzler is like, oh, shit, I barely have any... Because now she realized when something happened when she did this big stunt, she was like, oh, that was too crazy. So now, like, there was some sort of... And it's funny because it's, once again, groundbreaking. It's almost like a secondary mutation happened here. Arguably so. Is that a separate video or is it good enough as part of this one? 
was this when Dazzler's secondary mutation kicked in? Because now she has the ability to store light, although she didn't have the forethought to do it here, so she didn't have any, and they had to run away. But anyway... Oh, so they trick her with the studio lights. Oh, but then she's like, here I am. I guess she got some noise somewhere. Oh, yeah, did they go and turn on a radio or something? I don't know. You can always get noise if you need it, right? So then she's like, has to fight them. And she is like, it's like they're turning her into a menace because they keep attacking her and they have to defend themselves. Hmm. Ponder that. Anyway. So then uh, Roman screws her over, um, signs a deal with Eric Beale, the one who found out she was a mutant and wanted her in the first place. He bought the film and she has to sell her soul to him in a very Harvey W. kind of way if, uh, if she wants uh, the movie to see the light of day. She sees that Roman signed the contract and this uh, smarmy executive is going to tell her, you know, all, all the reasons why she needs to give up her life and sign it over to him and how she owes him and blah, 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 blah. And after all this convincing, she does it. She signs the contract, except she signs it in one of the most hilarious things I've ever seen in my life. I loved it then. I love it now. Go suck an egg. Hilarious. And then she punches him, destroys the only copy of the movie, says, F you. And then the fuck, the, the frickin' uh, secretary who mocked her for being a mutant on the way in, she's, uh, we do a call back to her singing Elton John's I'm Still Standing from the club in the beginning. And she says boo and scares her and I love it. And it's so good. And then Roman pulls up and he's like, I didn't mean to screw you over, sweetie. And she's like, hey, that's okay, whatever. You groomed me, it's fine. And then um, she forgives him but says she needs to go on her own. And... After all this, she's still a survivor. She's still standing. And she would go on to have like, I don't know, 10 more issues of her book or something. Anyway, love this book so much. Totally worth the read. I mean, honestly, if you if you think like it's not good, like it's very good or at least worth the read. Um, I think you can definitely get something out of it. One of my favorite books, crazily enough. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Dazzler, the movie, Marvel graphic novel number 12, Jim Shooter, Frank Springer, and Vince Coletta. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel, hit like, share my content, and I'll bring you more later.